Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave, the Cyber Guy. I'm your host. I'm an instructor at uh, Kapiolani Community College for the University of Hawaii system. And today we're going to be talking about uh, internships and how to start your cyber career, career, part three. With me today, one of my fellow instructors, Dale Nakasone, and he handles our internship programs. Welcome, Dale. Thank you, David. Good to have you, buddy. Thank you. Right. Thank you for inviting me. Let's, uh, first of all, we both teach for the University of Hawaii, Kapi'olani Community College. We have a program for cybersecurity. And as everyone knows, when you go out there to get your first job, it's what certifications do you have? What education do you have, and what have you done? What's your experience? Well, um, I've been. Let's talk about that. I've been at Kapiolani Community College since uh, 2002. I think I've taught uh, uh, almost every IT course that we have. Almost. <laughs> so, but yeah, you're our you're uh, utility player. <laughs> yes, I, I I taught a whole bunch of them. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, you know, prior to uh, joining the IT department. I was in the um, non-credit side of the house. So we used to coordinate um, training classes, uh, computer-based training classes uh, in software. You know, your, your typical Microsoft Office deal as well as uh, CAD, those type of courses. And we, at one time, we ran courses for senior citizens, yeah? And then uh, I joined the IT department as an instructor or lecturer and then uh, taught a whole bunch of stuff. And right now, I'm focusing on uh, databases, that's my passion, databases. So we used to do database administration. Yes. But it seems like with the cloud hosting of a lot of data these days, the administration is mostly like a control panel and you don't do a lot of administrative tasks anymore. So tell us about the direction you're headed with your database classes now. Um, when I first started teaching databases, oh, Many years ago. I'm careful um, now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> We're going way back, yeah. <laughs> Showing my age. Uh, but um, initially, database courses are all about design. Mm. Placing the, the data in the appropriate PUCA, uh, in, the, you know, in the appropriate fields and those kind of things, and just properly designing them to capture the information so that you could get things out. Putting the relationships yes. together. And, yeah. Exactly right. Uh, and that's changed. Um, and it went the way of administration. So now the better tools start coming around, right? Uh, Oracle, SQL Server, the non, uh, the open source stuff, MySQL. Uh, those products, what it enabled us to do was to add a level of administration and security, uh, as well as you know a little bit more sophistication in what we can do with the data. But you know, like everything else, like in security, like in computers, like in smartphone technology, here comes automation. Everything changed. <laughs> yeah. So you know, and uh, lately, uh, it's been around for a couple years now. The, the buzzword is data analytics. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what we've done at Kapi'olani Community College is you know now we're trying we're going to shift that focus away from administration and taken more towards the way of analytics. So how to visualize the data, how to manipulate it, how to ask questions that we might not ask. Yeah, well, yeah. capture the data first, yeah. uh, place it in a format where we can ask the questions, and then comes the part about, okay, now that we've got the data, what it is telling us, you know, what is it saying to us, what is the story? It can be surprising. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And you, you see data analytics in a whole bunch of things. Uh, the, the movie Moneyball, was a, a, a movie about data analytics and baseball. That's a great the, example. Exactly, yeah, Oakland great example. Athletics. Yeah. Uh, and what they did was they revolutionized how data can change the way we look at things. And in that particular movie with the athletics, it talked about, it spoke about what we, what we can use the analytics for in recruiting the right kind, the certain type of player, and placing them in the lineup because so. they fill that spot. Yes, we, we exactly. need we need base hits at this time. Yeah, or or he's a good he's a good uh, RBI guy. Yeah. Or he's a good utility player, yeah. right? Exactly. Now we use that a lot in cybersecurity. Exactly. You right. apply a little bit of artificial intelligence with some fuzzy logic on top of that, and the data can tell you all kinds of things, especially when there's an intruder in trying to hide exactly. in the millions of records in your logs. Yeah. There's one or two that kind of correlate. 
and yeah. we fish that out and oh look at this yeah. and and that brings to light some other stuff so that's incredibly useful that you know, we're going down this path now in addition to that you handle our internships yes okay so internships that's I, I guess it's a broad term and a lot of people don't really focus on how to define it or what people actually do during that or what's the what's the methodology we employ but tell us a little bit about how many students you got how much work it is how we put the students in what's that for when does it come in their educational path and and how do you how do you do it well you know the internship uh, course came about because uh, every year we invite members from the community from the private sector uh, people who have the potential of hiring our students uh, and you know several years ago um, you know we said you know why don't we have our students participate with these companies and these organizations prior to their graduation. So it works both ways. Our students get a look at what's real and the employers get a chance to look at our students as you know, potential employees. So you know, we started this internship program. Uh, usually the students um, take the internship program in their last semester with our program, yeah? Uh, and they're, so they're ready to graduate. They've, they, they, they have uh, taken and completed uh, the bulk of the courses that we require of them. So they have the skills to meet uh, and a potential employer's need, we feel. Um, each semester, I, I have between 15 and 20 students. Uh, and, uh, you know, we try to place them in different organizations. We call them sponsors. Our students have to have at least a minimum of 120 hours as part of that. Um, it's, now, that's with direct supervision. Yes. Most of the time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, uh, what we ask of the, uh, the potential employees, the sponsors, uh, is that they give us uh, a midway evaluation and a final, eval final evaluation of what our students did for them. You know, how, what kind of work are with them? And you know, I'm, I'm happy to report that, you know, for the most part, you know, the evals for our students have come back as excellent people. People that get along with coworkers, they know the work, they can do the work, uh, and they come to work, you know? It's tremendously important to put them in that setting yes uh, and I think uh, most people know the the age-old you know the version of, uh, of nerds that we are uh, <laughs> we don't seem to be the most communicative we yeah. don't uh, seem to be people you know people responsive right we like to hide in the corner do our yes. own thing but it, it's it's tremendously important now to get those people in front of other people so they can start interacting I think it's so easy when kids are growing up these days to stay on their computer to yes. get on their phone to have these online relationships and they're they're bold and brash online yes but when they come up they start talking to people they lose their English skills and they they, they can't really communicate uh, too well so this is a tremendous help to put them in front of somebody who it's not going to make them as nervous as someone in an interview, yes, right? They, I, they get that personality. Okay, for test. most of our students, you know, this is not their absolute first job. Uh, but for many of them, it is their first employment situation in information technology. Hmm. So it's, it's a different look uh, for them in seeing what is real. You know, what did we, all the stuff that we're teaching them, all the stuff that, you know, we were trying to get into their minds, you know, all of a sudden it's there, there's a light that comes on and says, hey, that's why I took that course. That's the aha moment. Yeah? Yes. And it used to be, I guess, you know, when we started our careers, yeah. uh, we used to say that every IT student would, uh, you get thrown in the pit. Yes. That little windowless room where yeah. there's a lot of empty yes. PCs, you got to do PC repair and then take stuff to a desk and crawl in the ceiling and run cables. But nowadays, they could put you right on the phone, give you a headset, and you're helping customers. Yes, absolutely. And that takes a lot of communication yeah. skills. I remember uh, oh, way back when, when I was doing help desk, you have to imagine their desktop sometimes because sometimes you can't see the desktop. So you have to kind of walk yourself through by closing your eyes. And that takes a lot of concentration yes. and some experience. And I, I think this is a tremendous asset when you go to an interview 
you can say, I've actually done that. Yes, in a real world setting. Right. Yes, not just in the classroom. And I made a paycheck. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So most of our internships are paid or? I, I would say about half and half. Um, some are uh, unpaid, but of late, of the last couple semesters, I think um, almost all of them were paid. Yeah, and not, you know, not great high wage type of positions, many of them just at minimum wage. Or but you're an intern. Yes. I mean, this, yes. is, this is the sweat you got to put in yes. to get your career. Yeah, and, yeah. and of course, there were uh, several unpaid ones that yielded uh, like or better opportunities. I remember a few of those, uh, some of our star performers went to the state yeah. and did unpaid. But it was like being uh, the president's assistant. Yes. You know, you're in the White House, you're doing stuff, you, you, you actually get to see that environment, yeah. and then they know you, yeah. and they can offer yeah. you work. Yeah. Which maybe, is, maybe not the White House. Not but, the White House. No. <laughs> we, we have our little version of Hawaii's White House yeah. and, and the state government, yeah. and yes. uh, they're fair about it. They put the job up online. You have to apply yeah. like everyone else, but when you're in the interview, Everyone knows you. Yes. Because you were there. You were the intern. Yeah. Everyone knows you have the potential. So you, it's really about who you know out here. Yeah. And it, of course, that. it never hurts to have those things on your resume. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I say that, you know, I just say that, you know, right now for many of our students, are, their resumes are rather light. Yeah. Oh, but when, well, once students, they come, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But once they do that internship and once they complete that internship, all of a sudden it's a big chunk. Yeah. You know, a big chunk goes at the top what they've done, what they've accomplished, you know, what kind of skills they realize that the kind of skills that we've talked about, we talk about with them the skills, they actually have the skills now because they've practiced them. And some of our students, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, some of them keep working for those employers. Yes. All the way through school. Absolutely. Because it's a good part-time job, and yes. they're, they're going off to UH West yes. or Manoa, and they still need a part-time job. Yeah. They just stay with that employer. We, we have several uh, former students now that got employment, and that's what they're doing. They're not continuing to the four-year program. They just went. They just went. They got uh, job offers, and they, they took them, and they're employed. There's a lot of potential out here in Hawaii, and yes. I don't think a lot of people know that that uh, there's there's a lot of uh, great jobs out here yes. with the state, yes. with the federal government. Yes. There's just tons of federal government out here, yeah. and then uh, we have 77,000 companies, according to the labor statistics in the state, and uh, many of them are small and medium businesses and IT people heavily needed. Yes. Yeah, and not just for an IT job. Yeah. Like w we've had internships, I'm sure where. The job isn't actually IT, but it's got a lot of IT-related things in it. It has to be IT-related, absolutely. Yeah. It has to be IT-related. Uh, and um, as, as we tell our students, uh, you know, they, they need to be able to wear a lot of different hats when they go to these different agencies or for their first employment. Especially with a small company. Yes. You gotta be kind of versatile. And, you know, yeah. and for many of those small companies, they could go in in support roles, yeah? Right. But in the support roles, they, they need to uh, edit a website. You know, they need to go ahead and troubleshoot computers that uh, and troubleshoot computers and printers. And, and point of sale. Yes, and and point of sale. Those kind right. of things. They need to be able to do that. Uh, they need to troubleshoot um, network problems, connectivity problems. And you know, I'm happy to say that those are the things that we teach, right? I, you know, those are things. Security. You know, not not just. You know, you know, not just you know intruders and hackers coming in, but general policies that every employee, every person in the company should follow to better protect their data, better protect their network. I, I agree, and yeah. we're going to take a little break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, and then go into more detail about where our interns actually end up and Great. what their success rate is. Good, good, All right? good. Let's take a break. We'll be right back, everybody. Till then, stay safe. I'm Jay Fidel, ThinkTech. ThinkTech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. 
Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on ThinkTech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on ThinkTech Hawaii. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave the Cyber Guy, and here with me talking about internships at the University of Hawaii Kapiolani Community College is Dale Nakasone, a professor there with me, and he teaches the database line, and also you're the internship, do they call it the internship leader, supervisor, yeah. or? Coordinator. Coordinator, okay. <laughs> Program coordinator. Right. We were talking about, um, is security is part of everybody's job, so internships, not only do you have to wear a lot of hats in IT, However, including that, uh, you have to do a lot of security, and you end up as the person who knows a lot of security, you get into that company and you have to be the trainer. Yes. Right? Yes, yes. Because security is not just the, that guy. It's a hive mentality, right? So hopefully we're training our people enough in basic security techniques to be able to pass that on to their new employers or wherever they're working. And uh, we, I try to promote in my classes entrepreneurship. Yes. You know, you, do, you don't have to just go work for a company. Yes. You can go out there and start your own company. We've had two of our former interns, former graduates, go out there and just start their own company. Great. And they're, they're doing well now. Not exactly IT related, but they have all that great cyber and IT knowledge when they start their company so they don't do things like set up a wireless router and forget to change the admin password. Yes. <laughs> which is a bad thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So let's talk about the internships. We have a little bit of an issue here on the islands. Uh, our jobs out here in the islands don't tend to pay what the mainland pays. Yeah. So we have something called brain drain. We, uh, yeah. we and that's nothing new to Hawaii. Uh, yeah. We've had that for many years. Um, and, uh, and and for for my students, I you know I, I actually encourage them to take a look. And many of the, of course many of them want to stay home, and um, I and I want many of them to stay home. But I also you know we constantly talk about you know possible employment centers. You know uh, there's there's booming industries. Uh, tech need booming industries that need technology workers all over the country. You know? Right. It's not just Los Angeles, San Francisco, no, Seattle. No, it's not, yeah. it's not just those. So. Yeah. Austin, Austin, Texas. Huge you know, tech center, the University of Texas, yeah. Austin Community College. It's yeah. a college town, but Dell is there. Yes. Yeah. And you know places like Atlanta, you know um, Raleigh, North Carolina. Big banking center. There you go. Yeah, you know, so enormous, there's yeah. there's a lot out there. If uh, the student is willing to take a look, and if they're willing to, uh, you know, want to do that, um, and you know what it does, those types of off opportunities, what it does is, um, you're, it it allows the student uh, to learn different things that may not be offered here as much as you know. That's a great point. So uh, you go to Silicon Valley for a while. Yes. You go out to Manhattan for a little while. There's a tech center in Dakota, yes. right? Uh, you work for Microsoft, you work for Seattle and uh, at Amazon, and you get all that experience. Wouldn't it be wonderful if someday those people came back here to the I, islands with all yeah. that great experience and knowledge? Yes, absolutely. And ex ex expand our tech industry. Yes. Yeah, I've always thought it's, it's funny that our West Coast is so tech heavy, but we're the farthest West state in the country, and we're right on the front lines of all this nastiness with China and North Korea. Even Russia has uh, an East Coast that, that looks at Alaska. So we're, we're facing all the enemies of the United States or potential enemies, right? And, and yet we're not this huge tech center. Yes. Right? We are a DOD epicenter, though. Yes. I mean, we have the NSA, FBI, CIA. Everybody's out here. Uh, any three-letter acronym you can think about, and some of our students actually go there. Yes. Right? And have been employed there. Right. Um, let's mention Nathaniel Weeks, one of our yes. star performers. Yes. going to be with the NSA here very yes. soon, just finishing up his degree. Yeah. Uh, Rochelle Monsalungan, yeah. she does the show every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, she's going to graduate here pretty soon, and she's the one that did the state ETS yeah. um, internship for no money. And uh, we're so proud of her. She was a single mom yes. doing that as, uh, you know, and, you know uh, incredible, uh, right? Uh, and like you, um, you know, many of us love our students. I mean, we oh, yeah. actually, 
you know, we are so, in, you know, we're so passionate about their success, you know. So when they, when they do get the, you know, get that success like Nathaniel, like Rochelle, uh, you know, it, you know, all of us celebrate, you know, we're just jumping up because we're so happy. And, you know, it's not just the big names like the NSA and those kind of, you can, our, our students are working for small and large companies and agencies, government, state and federal governments out there. And for you, every single one is celebrating. Every single one. Uh, including the entrepreneurs. Ryan, yes. Ryan Boardman. Yes. He went out there, started his own company. Yes. Good for him. Yes. Uh, again, not IT, yeah. but he's got all the IT skills, so he's not going to fall into the traps. Well, and yeah. I, I would bet. He's going to be very successful. I oh well, <laughs> come on, he's a real go-getter. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we have we have students that come to us and uh, play with me here for a little while. We're going to play a little game because I know you know this because you teach some freshman courses and yeah. I taught a lot of freshman okay. courses. When a student comes into IT, uh, so let's pretend the students watching now saying, "Hey, what's this all about?" Sometimes you don't know what you want. You just know information technology is cool, mm -hmm. but. When we got into the game, it was we could go work for a company and we were the guy, right? We had to do everything, right? You can't do that anymore with a lot of companies, right? There's, there's the web guy and the cloud guy and the networking guy and the programming guy and there's uh, the help desk guy or gal. And, and now you have to get in and the great thing about community college, it's inexpensive, and then go take databases. Yes. And programming. Yes. And cyber and yeah. networking and yes. a range of things. And we always tell the students, go with what you're good at. Yeah. What, what did you glom onto? What, what makes you happy? What thrills you? Yes. Uh, because that's what you're going to be passionate about. Yeah. For us, it was teaching. Yeah. We didn't know it at first. Well, yeah. we, we, both of us did not start in teaching. <laughs> right. Right. You know, so. 25, 30 years of IT yes. and then went, wow, this teaching is kind of cool. I yes, kind of like this. Absolutely. And now we just have this passion for it. I wish I'd known before. <laughs> I probably would have had my PhD by yeah. now. But uh, it's still, it's a, it's a wonderful experience in community college. Yes. And, and I joke with everybody that I, I had a great time in community college. Yeah. That first two years of college, yeah. best six years of my life. Yeah. Uh, and we have a wonderful uh, student body that doesn't have this motivation to get through that two years because it's $40,000 a year. Yeah. Right. And, you know, um, uh, of course, there are bigger academic names than Kapiolani Community College. Sure. But you know, uh, the the I would I would you know I you know I'm proud to say that our students get better or more attention, you know, as a student than any other university in the country. And it's not just classes. They right? go. We you have know, internships. We have outside you know, clubs you know, yes. that they can do. We have the uh, Hawaii Advanced Technology Society. Hats yeah. Yeah. has a chapter on almost all the campuses yeah. here in Hawaii, um, and and. We actually put them in a position to, if they do want to, what they call articulate or yeah. transfer to a four-year college, they're adequately prepared yes. to enter that university and mm -hmm. compete at that level. Or, mm -hmm. like you said, yeah. go get a job. Yeah, and you know, uh, most of our offices are within a few feet of walking distance where the students are learning. Uh, you know, and so if they want to come and talk to us, you know, we're right there. Yeah, and we regularly try to circle around and try and see if our students are, you know, in need of any kind of assistance or just want to talk story. So, you know, we have a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with all of our students. Yeah, yeah. if they want it. You and know, that helps they, in the internship. It helps okay. in the internship. You really got to be Helps in their continued academic and professional careers. Now, yeah. we, we do something every once in a while, and I love this about the, in the internship you, you, you've been doing. Um, a student can, if he arranges with you, or she arranges with you beforehand, they can actually perform the work hours in a summer. Yes. And take the actual course, the, it's 293, ITS yes. 293. They could take that in the fall. Yes. So that's three units of, I've already done the work, yeah. but I'm just gonna write a couple of reports, yeah. go to yeah. some seminars, yeah. and much less work. Yeah, and right? uh, I already have three students that have completed a course, and the course hasn't even started <laughs> yet. So you that's, know, and that's phenomenal. Pretty that's much great. done it. Yeah, so that's they're, great. They're done. And and the 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 three unit class they have to take with you. That's you know that's three units of their full time 
that they don't have to put much effort into. Yeah, they're pretty much done. So they can focus a lot on their terminal courses. Yeah, the other. And, and I pretty much uh, ready to post their grade. As soon as the semester starts. Right. Yeah, you gotta wait till the <laughs> semester starts. We uh, we should also mention we're we're getting some uh, some new opportunities. So yes. we we uh, we all always uh, let our students go off to the University of Hawaii West Oahu for their bachelor's of applied science in IT mm -hmm. and the BAS also in information security assurance or ISA with Matt Chapman out there yes. on the West Side. But now we have UH Maui College that has yes. a four-year degree, and uh, it's online. Yes. So our students can complete the internship with you, they can do the hats club if they want, they can get the great experience, plus we have an advanced professional certificate, third-year college courses, so this is junior level, on campus. Yes. They can do all that, then transfer out to Maui for the last two or three semesters. And the, and the, Maui, uh, the Maui component is all online? All right? online, so they don't so have to go out there. Yeah. Uh, most of our students complain, yeah, they have to drive across the island. For you mainlanders out there, that's not going to make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> it's only about 26 miles to the west side of the island, but with the amount of traffic on this island, yes. unfortunately, that can be, what, up to an hour and a half yeah. if you get uh, stuck, yeah? You know, I, I go through it every day, Yeah. right? Uh, and, and it can be um, bad. Yeah. Uh, but Especially for in a bus. Yeah. A city bus. <laughs> so, yeah, that's... Terrible right, so yeah. great opportunity for some students that yeah. would like to do a business degree with IT Focus. Maui College has got one now. Maui? So we're always, we're building more opportunities. I think on the West Coast now, several colleges uh, do a program that give our students uh, reduced tuition. It's not exactly local rates, but it's not out of state rates either. It's, it's about 60% yeah. of, uh, of the bill. Um, you know, uh, there's, uh, I was just uh, brought to my attention that, um, you know, Washington State University uh, has this WUI program where they accept uh, community college transfers, you know, so they'll accept, as a student get their AS degree, they can come in for uh, in-state tuition plus 50 percent. Yeah, that's a great deal. Yeah. And you get the mainland experience. Yeah, I a, mean, lot of, a lot of local people out there. And, and they're definitely the only college that we're working with. There are a number of other colleges that our campus is working with to provide those pathways to our students so they can achieve their goals. So let's sum it up. We're passionate about our students. We, we love them. Tremendous amounts of opportunity. Yes. It's inexpensive. Yes. And uh, we give them a lot of and, attention and, and coach them through. Yeah, we got, and they have great instructors they can talk. Of course. Yeah, and we're so good looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you for very your time, much, brother. Okay. okay, everybody. Thanks for being here on uh, Cyber Underground. Uh, I just got back from Black Hat and DEF CON, so in the next couple of weeks, we're going to start talking about all the horrors that I saw in the presentations of Black Hat and DEF CON and DEF CON's uh, famous Sky Talks. And uh, by the way, it's terrible. Everything's broken, as uh, Andrew the Network Guy would say. And he's going to be in here at the end of this month, too. We're going to have some great discussions. Don't miss it. Until then, aloha. Stay safe.